You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Merry Merry After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Merry Merry After Show. Hey. Hey. What's up, guys? What's up? What kind of music did you have for us today, Phil? Mary Mary Shackles Praise You. Oh, okay. Oh, this is like the intro? Oh, this is the intro of it. I was like, what song is yeah, this? Yeah, I was like, I it feel like sounds I'm in, like bells. Right, I feel like I'm in the <laughs> intro of uh, NYPD Blue or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. Hey, hey. turn up. Hey. hey. Oh, there it is. There it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Mary Mary, the After Buzz Show. I know I'm sitting in a seat that I'm normally not sitting in. Right. Miss Ashita Andre couldn't be with us tonight, but she misses you and misses us, and we miss you. Yes. So, um, she'll be back next week. I she will be back. Her. Yes. Um, but tonight's episode had a lot going can on. Can I just can I say who I am? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. I'm sorry. See, they go say that shade, and it's not shade. <laughs> No, it's, it's all not good. Shay, Joe. It's all good. You I'm just, just like we just. It's, it's, you know, be. it's a little different situation. Yeah. Well, well who are who are who you? I am, right? Who, who are they you? They know who I am. But if you guys don't know, I'm Chloe Onyx filling in for Ashida on right today. Yeah. And I'm Lim Gonzalez, and I'm filling in for myself. <laughs> but you're really not filling in. We're <laughs> right. just here. I'm filling in for myself and Ashida. Right. Right. Yeah. T- we had a lot going on today, guys. There was a lot going on. We were, us. But we were praising God earlier, so it's all good. For real. Shackles. That was a great song. I know. Yeah. Right? Hallelujah. I know. But let's jump into it. Let's jump. Because it was a lot going on. It was a lot. And I'm just saying, Erica, wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, it started with the father passing. It did. It did. And I was wondering when it was going to get to that because, you know, in real life, we know that that had happened. <laughs> I know. He was like blowing the cover like, all right, y'all. I so was- <laughs> the mic's off. Y'all know, right, that the father really passed. Well, I mean, it wasn't. I mean, you know, it's, it's on her album. She got a song dedicated yeah. to him. Um, and so, I mean, people that follow them know that, you know, their dad had passed. But, um, you know, it did show up finally on the show um, that happening. Yeah. It was interesting how they how they kind of put it out there because it was like the funeral. Like there wasn't any like lead up like, oh, my gosh, you know, dad's passing. You know, you know? what threw you want to know it's so crazy what, what threw me up What's when that? I first started to watch the episode. They mm-hmm. sh- you know, they do the previous. Right. And so they show they jump back like four episodes mm-hmm. when Erica first finds out that the father has cancer. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, wait, is this a repeat? Wait, hold on. Right. Because the way they came into this yeah. episode, they yeah. brought you back so far mm-hmm. to show you, and then it just jumped into the funeral. And Boom. so it kind of like threw me off. Because I was like, dang, yeah. this is a repeat tonight. We can't even have an after <laughs> show. I, le- I legit thought you that. You really did think but that. But they did bring you back far enough so that you knew what was going on. Right. And you know, it was it was it was very sad. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I did have a feeling from that time when they announced it. Like stage four cancer is very like end of the row kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I know I have two family members who've died in the last few years mm-hmm. of stage four cancer. And oh, really? And one died fairly quickly, and the other one lived all like four four years. Oh, okay. Um, one of my uncles in, after um, being having after stage four being diagnosed with stage, stage four, four still lived four years. Yeah, he lived about three to four years. God bless his soul, mm. Mr. Gregory Peck. Love him to death. Mm. And um, he he lived quite a long time. And yes. and that's not something that they normally, um, you know, that is seen. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't know the the time period of this show, mm-hmm. but um, I don't think that their father lived that long after the. I, it's kind of hard because of editing and stuff like that. I don't think he lived that long. Yeah. Um, but I mean, especially the way they kind of showed it, like he had the stage four. They find out, and then. 
we have the funeral. So we don't know how much time, but it hasn't been obviously years. Yeah, exactly. So it has been probably months, maybe a few months. Yeah. Um, so. And it was interesting too, because they were saying like there was a, a spot in one of the episodes where the city was doing better. I think they were all kind of talking amongst yeah. themselves. And I think it was Tina that said, hey, uh, her got word that daddy's doing better and he's probably going to come out of it and it's going to go on remission. Like they were thinking remission was going to happen. Yeah. And then and then they even bring that back up when they're kind of giving their, you know, um, talking to them individually while they're doing their funeral. Um, exactly. And showing and how I they And I want to talk about Tina for a minute because mm -hmm. when they first came into the clip, she was like breaking down. Mm -hmm. Like I was just like, whoa, like, you know, like I was very surprised. Mm -hmm. And then they show her speaking, you know, mm -hmm. because she brought up the fact that her mother said, you know, we're going to celebrate his right. life. Right. We're not going to mourn. Like, and I, I love, I mean, I don't love funerals, right. <laughs> but I love situations where funerals are like that, where yes. it's more about celebrating. Home than, going. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. mourning, you know? And so to see Tina breaking down so much and then she got up on that stage, it was like, my daddy <laughs> was strong. Right. I was like, oh my Go God. Go ahead, girl. You know, like it was just. You know, I really love that about her her strength. It shows mm -hmm. a lot about her strength. And then Honey, did you see her directing that? I was just going to say, I even put this down. Oh. I was like, yo, Honey was putting in work. I had a word. I said, Honey directing choir, she was giving life. Yeah. Like, she was giving yeah. life She was to on it. Like, da -da -da -da. And it's funny because I was thinking about my mom. My mother was a choir director for years when okay. I was growing up. And I was in the choir director. And I re and she had mad, like that, okay. mad energy uh, in the hand movements. And, and yeah. Jojo, Jojo, jo you know, all the three-part harmony. So it was it was dope. It was dope to it see was. that. And then just in support of her, you know, late. I mean, they weren't together, yeah. obviously, when but he passed. But she exactly. Was that was she. They were together for years and had, you know, a lot of children together. Uh, I know. A lot of uh, children. I know. God bless. Yeah. Them. So I, it was good to see her in that spirit. And just as a whole, I think they all like kind of they, they banded together. And yeah, it was sad yeah. as you saw them when it first started the funeral. But they kind of, you know, know what it was about. And that was one of just just for the record, that was one of the most spirited yes. funerals yeah. I have ever yeah. seen. Like, you know, like you know, it's okay to celebrate life, but they would I was like, that's a party. Yeah. Like, but I'm not mad, you know? No, that I think and, and I think too, when you know and this is my thing growing up in church, when you know someone has gone to heaven, mm -hmm. it's really a rejoice because yeah. they're in a better place. And I think that's kinda how they looked at it. They're like, Okay, there's no more hurt, he has no more pain. He's in heaven. Delicate. He's in heaven. Yeah. So let's rejoice that he made it to heaven. Exactly. So all good. Very, very good. So, yeah, so that was uh, one of my, you know, one of the highlights of the show, just mm -hmm. the celebration of the father's life. Mm -hmm. Let's move along to Australia, because Australia is Australia. a big deal that throughout is. the show. And yes. it's just very interesting. You know, again, it's like this... Um, predicament that Erica ke keeps getting put in of she's a solo artist mm -hmm. um, everybody wants to you know push her away from Mary Mary but she needs Mary Mary mm -hmm. in order to you know become this great solo artist or get the opportunities that she's getting well she's getting the opportunities because, because of, Mary of Mary Mary but then Warren doesn't want her to be a part of Mary right. Mary so it's like you know you're stuck between a rock and a hard place right but um, so Australia which is an international gig, mm -hmm. which is something that both her and uh, Tina have been working towards. And never have done, right. And never have done. And, mm -hmm. and it's so ironic. She goes, um, you know, for the last two years with uh, Mitch, mm -hmm. we've been trying to get- Two and a half years, Two and yeah. a half years, we've been trying to get international dates. And he's with them two months. And yeah, the new manager has mm -hmm. been with her for two months, mm -hmm. and now they have an international date right. on the table. So that makes me think, well, Mitch, what were you doing? like? I don't know. I'm just He's kind of looking bad. I'm just saying. He's looking a little bad. He makes it seem like firing him was the best decision. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You guys comment. Let us know. We love to to listen and watch and hear what you guys have to say. So definitely comment on YouTube, on um YouTube and iTunes. Yes. Um. So the Australia is on the table, but the issue is that it's for one week or mind you 10 days 10 days so more than mm -hmm. a week mm -hmm. and we all know that tina is trying to you know mend her relationship yes with um her wonderful husband mm -hmm. <laughs> who teddy who's working hard mm -hmm. and um erica's just scared She's scared. And I feel like in a way I kind of feel bad for Tina because she's just like, t like Tina's going to say no. Like everything right. is Tina's going to say no. She's not going to be with it. And I mean, it's right to a degree, but like give her, you know, a little chance. Well, I mean, I think they've been, what, 12 years now that they've yeah. been Mary Mary and mm -hmm. been together. And they're also sisters, so they grew up together, obviously. Exactly. And so it's like they know. I mean, 
each other. She's gonna know exactly. She's yeah. gonna know what's gonna work for Tina. Mm-hmm. They're gonna know. She's gonna. Know, Erica's gonna. Tina's gonna know what works for Erica. And in Tina's case, you know, and it's come up in previous episodes about her travel and about yeah. there's things that she just will won't do. And it's just like I don't care about the money. You know, yeah. I just care about my family and and you know. And she's comfortable at home. And it's just she just knows her. Yeah. So I don't think it was anything bad to say like, oh gosh, we got to get through Tina. Yeah. I think it was just a reality check. Like, okay, yeah, it's Australia. That's dope. They want Mary Mary, so it's not just me. Because if it was up to Erica, and they just want Erica, she'd be like, all right, I'm, I'm out. out. You know? Yeah. But the fact that they wanted Mary Mary yeah. um, to be a part of the whole deal, that it was just getting Tina to get on board. And my thing was, I had a feeling, I mean, I don't want to jump ahead yet, but I had a feeling that she was going to, she wasn't going to balk about it. Mm-hmm. For the simple fact, I mean, of course, she's going through what she's going through her husband, but I think it was a situation where it's an amazing opportunity. And at the end of the day, I think that she's all for the amazing opportunities. Yeah, she may have her say about it, but I th- I really thought in this manner, I thought that it was something that she was going to agree to. See, I don't know. I thought it could have went, you know, either way. It could have. No, I just felt like way. it was going to go the way. Go, she go the way. Well, see, I was like, Erica, you just got to like, you know, boo-hoo. You know, you got to play the little right. sister card. Like, right. oh, you know, right. it'd be great for my career. Yeah. And because really, it is, it is an opportunity more so for Erica to her career to blossom mm-hmm. but she kind of needs to ride the coattails of mary mary mm-hmm. so you know but it was a big opportunity for both mary mary and for erica right. so you know it's a win-win but of course we know for the last what two episodes now that erica's vocal cords have been bleeding yes and she's not supposed to sing mm-hmm. she's not supposed to talk mm-hmm. she's, she shouldn't even she should barely whisper and right. it's like continuous working or continuous you know she doesn't know how go. to stop she doesn't know how to stop and she knows she needs to stop but it's just like you know it's it's almost ironic because it's like you know god puts challenges in front of us and, mm-hmm. he, and i feel like it's to see what you're gonna do mm-hmm. so it's like the challenge is you're not supposed to be singing erica right but you got all of these great opportunities just coming up in front of you what you gonna do mm-hmm. and you know we i feel like as human beings sometimes we have to just you know cross the threshold of fear mm-hmm. a lot of us get held back from the fear like mm-hmm. if i do sing i'm you know i risk the permanent damage if mm-hmm. i do sing you know my my career could be over if mm-hmm. I don't sing, mm-hmm. then no one's gonna hear my record. You know, right. like all these um, things that you know just get thrown at us or thrown at Erica mm-hmm. for this situation, and you know she just has to deal with it the best way she can. And you know, the big situation here, of course, is Tina being down with the get down. Right. So as we know, Tina does say. Yes. Right. With some hesitation. With some of hesitation. Course. She has to talk to at first, right. Yeah, she has to talk to Teddy. But she okay, and this is another interesting dynamic is that Warren and mm-hmm. Teddy talk. Like they have those bonding moments. Right. So right. then in my mind, cause cause Tina out of respect for Teddy's always like, I gotta talk to my husband. Right. But then I thought to myself, Well, Warren is always talking to Teddy. Why can't Warren just, you know, <laughs> throw the elbow in there like, look, you know, we need to kinda do this. And, right. and I feel like maybe behind the cameras that they do, you know, that he did maybe talk to him. Sure. But I love the fact that Warren and Teddy have those bonding moments, like, you know, like they kind of keep each other in the loop too. Well, I think, I mean, it's healthy because obviously their brother-in-laws, um, they're, you know, they're so intertwined within their wives' work. You mm-hmm. know, of course, Warren is delved in it because he's he's the producer. Yeah. Now Erica, as her solo career, is under his label. Exactly. So he's, I mean, he's been a part of their whole existence. Teddy, of course, but he's also in the music industry. And remember, Remember, um, Teddy and Warner in that group together, the Soul Seekers. Exactly. So there's, yeah. So it's old. it's a lot. Of, it's a big gumbo <laughs> pot of just you know music and love and family. So I, I think it is good that they have that. And it's interesting too, kind of going back to uh, and I and I kind of wrote this up where she Erica wanted you know Warren to make up his mind because remember he was saying you know you're a solo artist you got to be a solo artist you got to yeah. leave Mary Mary alone. But then when it's like Australia's on the table, he's like, hey, well you better tell your sister exactly. you better get her going. You, you better get it right. You know what I'm saying? I don't these... like when... See, and this is my problem with Warren. <laughs> like, y'all know that personally, I just think Warren's a little too, you know, aggressive yeah, in the first yeah, place. Yeah. But it's like, to to me, it's just like, you can't, you can't be a, a what is it, a, a fence jumper or in the middle, mm-hmm. like, it, and you only want something when it, when it, when it helps your situation, right, right. you know, and when that, it works for you, when it works for you. And I don't like that. I mean, I can understand him saying, you know, for the time being, you mm-hmm. need to like chill with Mary Mary, mm-hmm. but he's like, no, like just right. the picture right. Like, right now. It needs to be you and right. like only you. And I feel like that's going to cause some issues in the future, but we'll get to that. So back to <laughs> next topic, right? Right. No, no, no. So, um, 
Mary Mary has a performance, mm-hmm. one of their last performances in mm-hmm. San Diego before mm-hmm. Erica needs to go on this rest, right. her, vocal rest. Supposed rest Supposed- that she's not doing. Oh, God, poor Erica. And so the big dilemma is, and I feel like we all have these moments mm-hmm. that the family is at this performance, mm-hmm. and she's like, the family hasn't heard my, my song, <laughs> Little More Jesus. Is the, you know, But after this, I got to go on vocal rest. Right. I really want them to hear the song. Mm-hmm. And so the whole time, Warren is just saying, but you know, you can't risk it. Right. You gotta, you know, chill out. Just do the Mary. And you see her during the Mary Mary performance. Mm-hmm. She kind of like lets the the audience sing her part a little, mm-hmm. and she turns to Tina a lot, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. she's just chilling. And then she busts out in the end and sings a little more Jesus. Mm-hmm. And Warren just looks like he wants his, to kill his face. Her. Is priceless. Like he's standing over there, like. I can't believe this lady did this. Like, I can't, like the whole time he's just like, like almost like a parent. Like, I can't believe she's doing this. Like, I can't believe after we had this conversation. And realistic, and it's funny you mentioned that, and I was thinking about that because I have a big family and I'm really close to my family. Mm -hmm. And I I know where she was coming from. And it was was really cute in the sense like, here she is this, you know, uh, you know, been doing music for years, successful Grammys. um, You know what I'm saying? She's a celebrity. um, And then her whole thing is, but my family ain't earned my single and I want to sing it for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I thought it was cool. And it's just, it, it really goes to show, just like we were mentioning, the closeness that she has with her family exactly. and how much she appreciates her family and loves her family and really wants to, you know, be good for her family. And I think Tina's the same way. So, and I think that's what makes them as the artists that they are because they are appreciative because that kind of bleeds in, I think to their fans exactly. and how they feel. So yeah, it, it, he, he was, he was not happy. He was tired. He was not happy. He was not happy. <laughs> he was just like, and this is so funny because my mind, I feel like he wanted to say, you disobeyed me. <laughs> you disobeyed me. Yeah. And I told yeah. you, he has that very father thing. Going yeah, on, he I'm does. Saying. He does. It's funny, but I was very happy that she got to sing her song. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, I feel like the card she kind of played was, you know, I rested, I chilled on the Mary Mary song mm-hmm. so that I could sing my right, song right. and I could do my song right. Because right. it's important that she gives 150% to right, right. her solo stuff at all times. Mm-hmm. And like she said, at least with Mary Mary, she has Tina to fall back mm-hmm. on. And so, you know, kudos to her. Her family got to hear the song. She had her family here. You see how he kind of came to her after. He was kind of, he didn't like come at her really like gangster like, mm-hmm. but he was just like, yeah, so uh, hey, by the way, uh, weren't you not supposed to sing that song? She's like, oh, yeah but uh you know i just, you know, I just felt about the healing power Jesus was I, was like, healing. I just felt whole in my spirit and the song came up and god yeah, just yeah. made it work right right i yeah. love it it's yeah. hilarious that was great <laughs> yeah. that was great so finally they go off to the essence festival mm-hmm. where we saw like before or a year ago they had done mary mary together right. for the right. essence and mm-hmm. now tina is um, excuse me, Erica is doing it by herself because right. everything's about the solo stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of, you know, it's interesting to see her in that light because it's like as much as she really, really wants it, she mm-hmm. gets very, very scared. Yes. Like a little kid, you know, because she's like, I don't have, who's, I don't know if it was you, someone said it like um, when Michael Jackson, um, I don't know if you ever seen their movie on VH1 and he's like, what am I going to do when I turn to my left and I don't see? Oh, like, yeah, I didn't say there. that, but I know what you're talking you know about. Somebody yeah, said that to yeah. me recently and it's so funny and i feel like i can always relate that to erica because mm-hmm. it's like what am i gonna do when i right. look to my right and i see that it's, tina isn't there right right or she can't or I have to answer all the questions by right. myself you know so it's just very interesting and like you know to see her in that dynamic and then also the fact that she's not supposed to be talking it's just to do all of the talking all by that. herself all that can we talk about when she talks to latoya look it um yes. so i thought that was very poignant in this episode because of course you know in the previous episode the doctor told her you need to rest exactly you should not do anything and of course erica's a workhorse um she's a go-getter yeah all all the opportunities if it makes sense she wants to do it especially now because her solo career is so important to her Mm -hmm. and she really knows that there's a time frame that she really needs to put her stuff out you know with the album coming out and so it's it's hard it's kind of a dilemma she's kind of walking this fine line and it was interesting how um when she was talking to Latoya um how she was like oh yeah well I kind of went through the same thing and um I took a month off a month off and that's how it got better 
And, and oh, that's and, how it was gone. She that's how it was gone. Went away the right. bleeding vocal Right, cords. exactly. And it was funny because like I saw her face a reaction when um she was like, "Oh yeah, the doctor told me to rest too." And she's like, "And <laughs> and you're not?" Yeah, like, like and you're here. And you're you're singing. <laughs> like exactly. she was like, "You're kind of like I'm thinking like what's wrong with you? You know, understand that this is and even Warren, I think was prior to that, he said that he's dealt with many artists mm. that have had that same issue and did not rest and now they can't even sing. Permanent damage. Permanent Permanent damage, which was one of the things they were fighting at, mm -hmm. fighting about. Is exactly, the, is the whole permanent damage. Thing. Exactly, and it's one of those things where it's hard because it's like she, she can right now she's going out on a leap of faith, mm -hmm. like Jesus, please just please, don't Lord. let don't let it get worse, right? But you know, like you got to be realistic, just like you know when they were just like our daddy's gonna make it, like he's strong, like and we all want to feel that, and it, and there are some miraculous situations, but mm -hmm. the realistic situation was he mm -hmm. had stage four cancer you right. know like he was going to die maybe not today maybe right. not tomorrow when they first found out but you know stage four is normally the end and mm -hmm. and almost you know as much as you want to have that leap of faith like god you're gonna heal my vocal cords right if you don't take the proper steps in the preparation like we just got to be realistic right you're going to damage your voice permanently and and extent. i've and i've seen that so many times and it's funny because you know, again, going back to like I said before, growing up in church, a lot of people are like, oh, God's just going to heal me um, and I'm going to be <laughs> fine. And, and you got, you know what I'm saying? You have diabetes and it's like, but you're not changing your diet exactly. and you're not going to get your pills and all this kind of stuff. Oh, but God's going to heal me and you eating fried chicken. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. it's like, no, that's not how God works. You know what exactly. I'm saying? You got to make sure you take the steps. And if you need to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. Yeah. And her thing is like, she heard the doctor. She went to the doctor. The doctor told her what she was going to do. But, you know, she's doing her thing. And, and, and I understand it's hard. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to take care of your body. You do. You have to take care of your body. And everybody knows gospel singers sing the like the hardest yes. on their voices. Like yes. it's like, ah, yeah. you know, like it's just yeah, very, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Like it's just. It's hard, right? Like, and you know, I sing a little bit, like when I'm yeah. writing my stuff, yeah, and yeah, I'm just yeah. like, full voice hurts. Like right. sometimes you gotta regroup, take right. a minute, <laughs> right. cough it out, <laughs> right. you know, grab some water. So it's not like she's doing some like some Britney Spears mm -hmm. pop, you know, like a, she's like a you know, what she I mean? can't lip sync yeah, at her concert, right? Ain't she, none of that happening. She's not talking those sexy little words. Right. She's like, ah, right? You know she's what I'm in saying? it. He's in it. It's gospel so, music, exactly. So, and, and I mean that genre in itself is very very strong mm -hmm. vocals mm -hmm. so it's like you know you have to know when it's and she hasn't had a chance to break because mm -hmm. it's one date after another date okay this is the last date but wait right. we got a new date right so let's just take that one more date but right. wait there's another date exactly you know so it's just it's craziness mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just saying but i'm glad you brought up the latoya thing because she said that to her at the 365 mm -hmm. black awards right and at first, Erica just thought she was just singing a little song in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then she finds out that she's going to be closing right. the awards, which is huge. Huge. Because anybody, we all look for any award show, I think, mm -hmm. when you think of like who's going to be last, you're like, all right, take us home. Right. Like, that's always the phrase, like take us home, mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. it rain. Exactly. You know, like throw fire on that performance. Open up the heaven's gates. <laughs> Open up right. the heaven's right. gates. <laughs> and so she feels the pressure and she already had, you know, Warren and everyone mm -hmm. else telling her you're not supposed to talk. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be singing. You mm -hmm. shouldn't even be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, what would you do if you was in that predicament of just pressure? You know, it's 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 it's, it's tough. I mean, yeah. um, and I think you know Warren was trying to give her the pep talk because he's like, "Yo, you've closed before, yeah, like it's with nothing. Mary, Mary. Yeah, now you're by yourself, and it like you were saying earlier, like it's almost like she's she's a new artist like has never done this before in it's some like cases she's a baby right right in some cases she's like i don't know if i could do that like i don't know if i could really and it's different because it is it's different from being solo than with a group yeah. you know and i think that a lot of people that have gone solo mm -hmm. um uh, outside of groups i'm sure have experienced that one way or the other where they're like it's all me you know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't have my guys or my girls or whatever, you know, type of group you're with with me. It's me all the time. And all the focus is on you when you're the solo artist. Yeah. You cannot hide behind anything. Yeah. So I think that's a lot of the pressure. And again, she wants to have a good showing because she wants her solo and she wants this not to be a fluke. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, Erica came out of solo. Oh, yeah, it was all right. Oh, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. And then she can't do anything anymore. So she knows the impact of music and how it can be fickle. And it's like you're hot one time and the next you're not. So yeah. she wants to give a perfect showing, exactly. especially in a situation like this where all eyes are going to be on her. And if she does a good job, mm -hmm. people can blow up. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, she you saw her with her album. She's like, oh, it's my album. You know, I she know. unwraps it and she's like, it's just me. You know, she's very excited. But at the same time, she knows that the shelf life is not there if you don't do a good job. Yeah. And speaking of the album, it was just so interesting to see, like, you know, her take it out. Because it's like you've been in the industry for 12 years. <laughs> right, but right. because she's starting over, it's really yeah. like being like, you know, like 18 with a record it deal is. and you have your first album and it's like, oh my God, this is real. Right. So it's really ironic to see like the way that plays or the dynamics mm -hmm. that it plays in her life. Mm -hmm. And you know, I love... Um, Tina's like she's just so supportive. Yes, you know she's just yes. so supportive. She's Very all about. So. With Erica's the exception success. of she was just like, yeah, I'm gonna go be on husband um because I'm getting some husband time. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna support I, you in spirit. God bless you. <laughs> but you know, but no, because you know, okay. So, but we all know what she's going through, and right. even for her to right. accept the Australia thing, you know, just for her to say, you know, I want to be positive, but there's mm -hmm. so much of this. The she's scared of when I leave. What mm -hmm. is Teddy gonna do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when when I leave, oh, and I feel like. That's part of the reason why Tina doesn't want to go anywhere for longer than two days because yeah. it's like all this anxiety. Well, now, now, yes, yeah. now that she knows that he's cheated and it's happened when she was gone. Yeah, I mean, you think about it, like when they were talking and she was kind of discussing that with him, you yeah. know, about Australia, and she her question to him was, "What are you going to so, do? Yeah, yeah, what are you going to do when I'm gone? What are you going to be doing, <laughs> sir? I just really want to know right now. Tell me." And he was just like, yeah, reading my books right, and my the prayer, like Bible he was trying to sound the kids so innocent. Yeah, meditating and doing but, dishes. But this is the thing I don't get about that situation either, which I would be doing. Like, mm -hmm. if, if I have this situation, I know me and my husband need to make it right. We going together. We mm -hmm. attached at the hip. You, I'm going, you going. And that's the end of that. Mm -hmm. Like, I, and I, I feel like I don't understand why they can't do it. I know he has his job or whatnot. Right. But shit, fly out for three days and yeah. go back, do your job, <laughs> go, come back for two more days yeah. and go, you know what I mean? Like, make make that work. And I mean, I don't know specifically what Teddy has to do that he cannot travel with her. Well, I mean, he has his own job. You know, like I said before, he's a drummer on this night show. Yeah. So, but what, how many days, like, let's right. be real. Well, um, but week. he's come, you've seen him come out for stints um, I don't know to how do long stuff. that stint is. Well, though. I'm just saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is he can't be with her 24 seven, and we know that he can't do that. Yeah. And then I, and I think if he was able to, he probably would. But you know, again, they have kids as well, so yeah. he helps take care of the kids when she's gone. So that's part of his duties yeah. on top of his regular job. But I feel like they're their situation right now is just in such a delicate state mm -hmm. that they need to be and i mean they, it, it is apparent that everyone's working you know a hundred times mm -hmm. harder teddy's mm -hmm. working extremely hard but in this situation it's just like all right you know we're in a delicate state mm -hmm. you know i have to go for 10 days we need to make it work or you're at least there for at least four or five of those days so right. it's really not 10 days that we're apart right. and i'm sure they got 20 million sisters and mm -hmm. cousins and brothers and, and mama honey i'm pretty sure somebody who's going to help out and i'm like they not poor they can always get a, a well, little yeah, nanny no, for I, a day or I, two or i whatever. see what you're saying i see what yeah. you're saying and i honestly i think at this point i think he is doing whatever he needs to, to do to yeah. make sure that he stays up with her like yeah. so i think if he could go out with her i think he would yeah. you know bottom line and if she could have him there then she would that's yeah. not the case so i think that's why his response was I'm gonna be reading the Bible. <laughs> and I'm gonna be meditating, and I'm gonna be. She you know, just get a camera in there, right? House, right like, exactly. It, like just camera. Where you? Right. Uh, like you know, just I don't know. <laughs> nanny that's, cam. <laughs> nanny cam. Right. Something in a, like in a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, teddy right. bear. Something because like I couldn't do that. Like that's just she's paranoid at this point. She is. She is, and I think that was part of her hesitation. Obviously, of not wanting to go ten days. Yeah. Um, but then the fact that she's leaving her husband. Exactly. And that's when everything happens. So that's in the back of her mind, and. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure that, you know, if they show them in Australia, mm -hmm. um, that's definitely going to be something that she's going to be either she's going to be calling them all the time or she's going to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be in the back of her mind. Yeah. I don't know that that will affect her performance or affect the trip itself, but it's definitely going to have it's going to resonate with and her. And we even see a clip from the next show where she's mm -hmm. like cursing him out, but mm -hmm. like not really cursing. But right, right, you right. Know, same idea. Church cursing. Church cursing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's kind of going ham on him mm -hmm. on the laptop mm -hmm. about, you you know what he's doing and where she's at and da, right. da, da. i'm like teddy just get your ass on the plane and just go where she is and I, listen i feel like that is half the battle mm -hmm. like like for all of this stress and let me just be where you are and mm -hmm. let's call it a wrap take a bit take you take a little vacation from work See, i'm sure there's a filling drummer for the tonight show kind of right just saying. because i need you here because i need you here for the sake of our marriage right <laughs> but um 
Let's go back to Erica before the performance because mm-hmm. she had a very touching moment. Yes. Where she was, you know, getting ready backstage. Mm-hmm. She can't talk. She's mm-hmm. going through all these emotions and she thinks she's thinking of her father. Mm-hmm. And she comes across a message that her father left her for her birthday, wishing mm-hmm. her a happy birthday. And it was just so like, I really put myself in those shoes and go, wow, like, like, where we are right now with just technology to be able to like, oh, I miss, you know, that person who's mm-hmm. not able to talk to me anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, let me listen to this message they left me last week or month right. or right. whatever. And to hear his voice, I know that that meant so much yes. for her. Yes. You know, like I was just like, wow. That was heavy. Yeah. I, I, it took me back. Um, my mother, same simple situation. Her, She lost her father. Um, and um, but she hadn't it's not like she was close with him yeah um, but still losing him they went and uh, her and her siblings yeah. went to get the stuff and she found a recording mm-hmm. of his voice from like a, a, a answer machine yeah so that was something that she kept you know so that anytime she wanted to hear his voice yeah. she could so I, it definitely talked about him and, it, and it's touching because you could tell that she loved her dad yeah. um, even with Despite all the right the everything craziness. that happened yeah. and that's the thing it's like in in and going back to the the beginning of their funeral tina even said like we haven't always in or i can't remember exactly how she said it but yeah. she said things had always been perfect you know but i love my dad you know and i think that in a lot of families it's that way things yeah. aren't perfect things happen but at the end of the day you love each other exactly. and she definitely loved her dad and i thought it was dope that she could have that yeah so she talks to she she listens to the message mm-hmm. she talks to tina she, you know, gives her a little excerpt about how she's mm-hmm. feeling. Right. And, you know, I love Tina. Just like, you could do this. Your album yeah. is, you know, it's bomb. You, right. you get, could stop. Like, you go get right. it right now. Right. And um, she goes on the stage and mm-hmm. she tears it up. And Warren puts the stamp of approval. Because <laughs> you know she don't tear it up unless Warren exactly. says. Exactly. You know, if he says it's bad, then exactly. she it is bad. But no, he's like, she she put everything aside. She was very professional. Mm-hmm. And she went out there and she did her thing. Yeah. And, you know, just watching it, I I got a little goosebumps, too. I was just like, all right, yeah. all right, go ahead, Erica. Yeah. But yeah, she tears up the performance. And she closes that show like it's nobody's business. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she, she does the Erica Campbell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I... Through everything that she's going through, it's just like she has she's strong. She has mm-hmm. strength. And, mm-hmm. you know, whether she got it up from talking to her sister or through mm-hmm. her father, you know, she just shows that, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what's going on, I'm going to do what I have to do. Right. So I, I love to see that. And, you know, the fact that she did it because I was like, God, what if her voice just goes out? Like, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I was just like blown away and I was like super happy for her. Yeah, it was dope. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was, you know. That was the what do you want to call it the uh, the, the 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 topping on the cake the, the icing the on icing the cake. cake thank you I <laughs> try, I'm telling y'all I've been all over but yeah so what are your predictions for next week predictions predictions <laughs> uh, let's see. and now your after buzz TV predictions okay so um you kind of you know talked about a little bit brought it up about um, Tina going mm. ham on um, you know her husband. Uh, Teddy. So um, I think they're they're going to there's going to be some issues there, obviously, um, because we know it's still touchy with him. Um, going back to w- what happened originally, they both thought that they were going to have some time because they thought after the uh, San Diego performance yeah. that they were that was it for Mary Mary for a while until she brought up, you know, Australia. So I think they were planning on. But that kind of, you know, jaded some things. So I think that mm. there's definitely going to be a rift there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with that situation, um, I think that, um, the, uh, the manager, the new manager that is, uh, Erica's manager. And I, I think is going to turn into be Mary Mary's manager. Yeah. I think that it's going to become, because I think that that was something they don't have a manager as Mary Mary, you know, they fired Mitch. And so I think because he's doing such a good job with Mm -hmm. Erica's career, I think they're going to just ask him collectively because then, um, you know, you have Tina, who's going to, you know, be affiliated with him yeah. uh, and get to know him. I think because of that, especially with the whole, come on now, you know, Australia, yeah. I think that's going to like, can you just be Mary Mary's manager? Exactly. So that's my prediction. Okay. See, I have to like combat that a little. Uh-oh. Now. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shoot. So here's my predictions. I feel like we haven't heard the last of the controversy between Erica leaving Mary Mary and focusing solely on Erica Campbell versus you know sometimes mary mary mm-hmm. and more of the time um erica campbell um we actually get a little sneak peek 
of that in the next episode too. I feel like there's just more upheaval to come mm. as far as, you know, being able to for Erica to branch, you know, to branch off and do yes. her thing, but still want to do Mary Mary because I feel right. like she's getting so much backlash from from Warren. He's just like, Shh, right, like you know, always <laughs> in my mind. Um, as far as like, you need a clean break, but it's like, let's be honest, she needs Mary Mary, mm -hmm. and honestly, um, I feel like she doesn't really want to leave Mary Mary either. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I don't know. I feel like there might be some tension, some fight in between her and Warren. Because, mm -hmm. you know, she, I feel like she's going to have her sisters back at the end of the day. And as much as Tina wants to take time off and be with her family, I don't think she's ready to let Mary Mary go completely. Oh, I agree. No, you know? I, I do agree with that. I don't. So you think that there's going to be something that's going to come up like tension? Just or... more tension, more mm -hmm. of the fight in between whether Erica can be a part of Mary Mary mm -hmm. or, or if she's she just has to do Erica Campbell and cut off Mary Mary completely. completely. And I feel like Warren is going to be the driving force behind mm. that. And because she has to choose between what her husband wants and, mm -hmm. and what her, what she wants and, and what, how she feels it should be between her and her sister. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or fighting for her sister right. as well, being a part of Mary Mary. I feel like there's going to be a lot of upheaval and tension. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, those are my predictions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, that is it for our show this week. I know it's a little wacky this week. Don't don't judge me. It's been it wasn't a long wacky. Day. Oh, just a little in the beginning. You yeah, know, the beginning yeah, a, little, a, little, bit. a little wacky. I just kind of jumped in there. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> it kind of started with the old CSI New York uh, intro that we got yeah, from the beginning yeah. of Shackles. Yeah, yeah. Just all thrown up, but that's what makes it special. <laughs> right. But again, I'm your host Chloe Onyx. Thank you for tuning in. You can find me on Instagram at Chloe Onyx and on Twitter at Chloe Onyx Eleven. And where can they find you? Well, they can find me at the Poet Saint, and that is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook all day, every day. All day, every day. And don't forget to check out Maria Menounos' new show on Oxygen, yes. 10 p.m. on Tuesdays. Yes. It's called Chase and Maria, and Chase and Maria Menounos, excuse yes. me. And it is fun, fill pack. So yeah. make sure you guys check in, and we will see you guys next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.